What's up guys, Technobo here for Server Pro and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using My Worlds. My Worlds is a simple but comprehensive world management plugin. The plugin makes it easier to create and manage worlds for your Minecraft server. To install the plugin, head over to the plugin section. Select the Spigot tab and search for My Worlds. Install a version that's compatible with your server and restart. Alternatively, you can download it from the Spigot page and upload it to your Server Pro panel. Keep in mind that the plugin also requires the BK Common Lib plugin to be installed and updated to work properly. You can see what plugins you already have installed by going to the Install tab under Plugins. When everything is installed and working properly, type slash help space my worlds to get started. There are four help pages, so we can also use slash help my worlds space two, for example, to see the next page. Let's start with some of the general commands. We can do slash world space info for information of the world we're currently in, slash world list to see all available worlds, slash world load or unload to load or unload worlds, and slash world save to save a currently loaded world. Getting into some more exciting commands, I'll run slash world space create to see a list of environments and usage with this command. This command is a little confusing, but here's all you need to know. To create a world, we'd enter slash world space create space followed by a name of your choice underscore the world's environment. A list of these are found below. Normal, nether, the end, flat and large biomes are the world types and we can add an underscore followed by another word such as amplified, buffet, flat, etc. Colon, the chunk generator type, which if you have custom generation plugins like plots or skyblock, you'd enter that here. Colon, followed by an argument for that world generation plugin. Of course, if you're creating a basic world, you could ignore everything about world generators. Space, followed by the world's seed, if you'd like to enter one. So in my case, I'll simply create a super flat normal world just to demonstrate. Slash world space create space test underscore normal underscore flat. When the command is run, you'll see some information on the world in chat. Once it's completed, the world is already loaded. So you don't need to load it yourself using a command. To reduce server load, you can always run slash world unload followed by the name of the world to unload it later. To teleport into the world, we can use slash world space spawn space followed by the world's name. So in my case, test underscore normal underscore flat. To set a new spawn, we can use slash world space set spawn when we're in a world. We also have some general commands like world time and world weather to set time and weather, as well as some toggles such as world game mode, world hunger, world difficulty, world PVP, and world forced respawn. We can of course stop certain mobs spawning with slash world deny spawn, followed by a mob name such as creeper, followed by a world name such as world. And we can of course let them spawn again with slash world space allow spawn, followed by mob name and world name. You can also toggle saving of the world with slash world saving and toggle respawning at beds with world bed respawn. To stop spawn being loaded persistently all the time, we can use slash world spawn loaded on or off. We can also tell the plugin to teleport us to the world spawn or our last location using slash world remember last pause. We'll get more into this in the config. We can also choose to keep inventory separate between worlds or of course linked with slash world space inventory. We could choose something like world inventory split world to make sure that world has its own unique inventory. And to keep items between world teleports, we can use world inventory merge, followed by two world names. So for example, world and test normal flat. This links my world and test normal flat together. Portals between worlds are slightly confusing, but easy to use once they're set up. First, we need a portal. You can either make one, find one, or even spawn in a few portal blocks using slash world space give portal nether or end. After creating a portal, place a sign underneath and enter the following. Open brackets, portal, close brackets. Line two should be the name of this portal. 
I'll use, for example, port flat because we're in a flat world. Then the third line should be a destination portal or world name. I'll use port world. We'll create this portal in a moment. And the last line can be another name for the destination or simply leave it blank. I'll head back to the overworld to create a portal there now. World spawn world and we've teleported back. Here we'll do the same, just with only a name so this portal doesn't take us anywhere when we enter it, making it a one way. So open brackets portal close brackets port world. Going back to the super flat world now, we'll hop into the portal and poof it works great. And a few final commands. We have a world set nether portal and a world set end portal to set a default destination for new portals. For example, I could enter world set nether portal world underscore nether to set whatever world I'm in's nether portals to point to another world's nether. And of course, there are a few last management commands. World evacuate removes all players from the world and takes them to another world. World delete, world copy and world repair are all self-explanatory as well. Locate the config folder in the plugin folder. In here we have a few different files. Worlds.yml contains information and settings for all worlds. Portals.txt contains all of the portals. Permission defaults.yml contains all the permissions for this plugin. By default, all are set to op only, but you're able to change them here. If you're using another permissions plugin, that will take precedence. Localization.yml contains translations for what the plugin says in chat. Inventories.yml contains information for linking or unlinking inventories between worlds. Defaultproperties.yml contains default settings for new worlds that you can create with the plugin, so you don't have to always set them. And finally, config.yml. It's the normal configuration file that you're used to from other plugins. Everything in here is well documented, meaning that every setting has information about it above it. For example, we can change whether players are instantly teleported when entering a portal by changing always instant portal on line 48. If a world has remember last pause set to on and portal to last position on line 86 is set to true, a player will be taken to their last position instead of the world spawn when a portal points to just a world instead of a specific portal. Anyways, this video has gone on long enough. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any plugin suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.